Hey everyone, today's video is going to be pretty exciting. You know, one of the key features of SDXL is the ability to do text. We saw that with uh, Stubble Diffusion 1.5, text was absolutely horrendous. And with SDXL, it got a lot, lot better. However, in testing a lot of the top models, I found that doing any sort of complex text or multiple words uh, would still be a fail. In fact, you can see here, uh, I have 10 of the top models uh, or so, and uh, you can see none of them could spell the word flatulence in uh, in, in spray painting. Uh, in fact, one model decided to just totally give up and give us a butt. So obviously there's a big gap here. Uh, you know, a lot of people are also going to Dolly 3 to do a lot of the text um, rendering of images and bringing it over to uh, SDXL after, but obviously that's not efficient. And obviously with the censoring, issues of Dolly 3 right now as well, not an ideal solution. However, happily, I'm uh, going through an amazing new node. Uh, it's part of the comfy roll uh, set of custom nodes. So if you want, go to install at uh, through your manager, but comfy roll has a set of nodes to be able to put text onto images or to even create text by itself and, and allowing you to bake it in. The first example is actually a a uh, very quick creation of text, and we're gonna overlay that text box on top of an image. And so I'm gonna zoom in here. As you can see, basically I start off with a very basic uh, cartoon hole. I always use the Mile Styler again. It's really great to stylize your photos. And from here, I'm taking it up into uh, giving a little padding, right? I'm adding a little padding to the bottom where I want my text to be. Uh, because I could always overlay it on top. I don't want to lo lose the scene because there's a lot of great detail here. So by doing so, I then add this new node, the comfy roll draw text, CR draw text. And when you do that, you're going to provide, it's going to basically create a box with the text in it. So you're, you're providing the dimensions, the width and the height, and the font name. The fonts, by the way, uh, will by default go uh, from your fonts folder within that custom node. Uh, it will not default to your, let's say, Windows directory font folder. You can, however, create a symbolic link or reference folder to point to your Windows font folder um, for the, the intermediate or advanced users. But honestly, I actually kind of like having a separate font directory where I just copy the fonts over uh, that I need. Additionally, I want to uh, note that there's a great, uh, if you are looking for fonts, this is free and this is not sponsored. Uh, but it's just a great, great, great free resource called 1001 Fonts. You can search for any sort of style of fonts, download them, and then add them to your fonts directory. So after I've uh, created my text here, and by the way, I have multi-lines, right? So you can have multi-line text, uh, have the size, etc. When you plug it in here into the preview bridge, it's going to show you what it looks like. You can obviously adjust. Uh, your positioning, your spacing, your margins, alignment, etc., even rotation, uh, as well as the color. And here, in this case, I just did a simple uh, white background. Typically, you can just do black, right? But if you want to do any sort of custom hex colors, um, you can do that as well. And you just choose custom, and then you can decide on what the hex value for that color is. And in fact, Google has a great uh, hex color chooser. If you just say hex color picker, you can choose whatever color you want and your hex value is right there. You can hit copy and you're done. So very, very quick uh, to grab what hex colors you'll need. And after that, right, so once you've said, okay, this looks great, uh, you're gonna then want to kind of composite or, or mask them together, kind of bring them together. So you can see I basically brought together my destination, which was my original with my padding, obviously. I brought in my text box here, and then I did a little bit of adjustment, right? Where does that box go? It starts kind of here at the top, bring it down, and I'm done. Nice little cartoon. You could use this for uh, any sort of, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be illustrative. It could be definitely photorealistic. It could be any sort of captioning as well. All right, next example. So the next example is a quick, easy text overlay. We're going to go kind of beginning sort of beginner user to more advanced. In this case, you could see I'm just simply overlaying smooches for pooches, uh, text on uh, over the image. 
the photorealistic image. You can see the same sort of normal type setup. And over here, I have a different node called CR overlay text. Uh, same kind of thing where you can see it's multi-line. So I kind of just uh, had multi-lines there. Uh, just my font, all the normal parameters. I wanted a special green, so I did a special text co color font, as well as the rotation. This time I rotated it. You can see it's not just straight, you know, horizontal. I added kind of it to line up with the cloud. Um, very, very simple example, but that is number two. Number three. All right, so now we've kind of done the very, very basics. We want to start to make this a little more realistic, right? We want to start to bake in the text, make it part of the scene so it doesn't seem like you're just simply slapping color text over the top. Uh, in this case, you can see I'm going to zoom in here. You can see originally we have just kind of the puppy shot by itself. I added the text over top. You can see it's it's very crisp and it doesn't look very realistic. And then the final one, you can see it's now kind of blended into the picture itself, giving it kind of a, a more integrated type feel. So in this case, just to walk through it, did my normal sort of uh, lineup here of my prompt. And then I brought it over to this overlay text. So I basically have three text items. You could see from the image down here, I have kind of a simple blue, and then I have the white with the kind of back, uh, almost like a, a drop shadow behind it. In this case, I wanted to do it with kind of uh, black text first, right? That's your shadow, and then the white text on top of it. And so you're kind of doing that sort of layering. So same sort of thing, right? You're doing your text, specifying your parameters. You'll have to, you know, render a few times to kind of get the position right. Um, I also, just so you know, you can kind of drag and that really helps a lot for doing this very quickly because then you can quickly drag, quickly render, see where you're at, drag, 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 uh, and render and get it to the right spot. Um, it's uh, not so bad to be able to do. But once you've done that and you have that lined up, the final piece of this is taking this guy, which is not baked in yet, and going to a VAE encoder, you're turning it back into a latent, back into kind of like that digital space to be able to play with a little bit more. I basically copied the same prompt I started with, except now I added this painted blue humane text and the white text outlined when Minneapolis. And by doing so, now you're saying to the AI engine, I also want this text specifically, and I want it to now start to be part of the scenario. Now, obviously, as you start to render this, if you were to do a denoise of 1.0, it would completely morph the entire scene and you would lose all that uh, previous detail. So if I zoom in here, what we actually do is we are, are denoising it just by a little bit, right? And this is now going to vary, vary on preference and also how much you want to modify the text. If you do too high of a denoise, it will start to change the letters and the letters will morph and it won't actually be the right letters anymore. So you have to kind of play with it a couple of times, do a, a few key, uh, key previews as you're going along. And what I like to do is I just denoise, I start to render, I have actually in my queue up here running, uh, I kind of watch it, I watch it, I watch it, oh, it's too much, I'll cancel it. Uh, so you don't have to go through the full render every single time. You might get through, you know, your three or four kind of preview states, right? That's why I like the preview method to be auto here. It starts to show you what it starts to look like. And the moment if it goes too far, uh, you then can cancel it and then start, start it again, change the noise uh, levels or, or whatever. So typically I find two different scenarios. One, if I like the text to be really perfect the way it was kind of overlaid, but just kind of faded into or baked into the image, I'll keep the denoise really low. I'll keep it maybe 0 0.2, 0 0.3, maybe even 0.1, but I'll have a higher step um, count. So I might have 60, 80, 90. So it has time to bake in, but really, really little changes so that you're not seeing uh, a lot of significant stylistic or even letter sort of changes. If at the same time, I want it to change stylistically, and we have an example I'll show you in a bit. Um, in that case, I want it much higher. Now, you're never going to go to one because, again, that'll warp your entire scene. It might be closer to, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.62, 0.63, et cetera. You, again, you have to play with it, but your step count is going to be really low. It might be 15, might be 13, might be 20 at max. Uh, depends on how much style change you want. But by doing so, it will really significantly shift the style, but do it very quickly uh, to get you to where your end state is. So this is a great result. I really like the kind of reality of this. 
and we're going to jump to our next scene. All right, so now we're going to show you a little bit again back to the kind of textual realism. Uh, this time we did it in a subway, uh, and we went back to our flatulence uh, example, right? Because that was the the challenging situation at the very beginning. As you can see, I want to basically paint the word flatulence uh, along the wall here. Uh, and so I started again with this the straight text, right? And then I baked it in. So you could see if I zoom in here, the cracks, you can actually see the paint and the cracks. That reality is now part of the text. And it's actually baked into the scene, which is great. And in fact, just so you know, in the future, one of the parameters of these text notes is that you're going to be able to rotate in 3D. So right now, this is kind of an illusion of just changing the rotation a little bit and the kind of position. In the future, it will be uh, more of a, a true 3D sort of uh, positioning. Uh, but just to quickly walk through, we've got our prompt, right? Just kind of like the large tile wall, etc. We kind of do our render. We could see that here. I do an overlay text with the word flatulence. Uh, I chose a graffiti font. I went back to that font site and grabbed graffiti font, did the sort of coloring and the alignment, et cetera. And then when I render it, again, we're going to bring, we're going to bake it back in. So we're going to re-encode it and bring it into our sampler. Here, under the styler, now we're including that actual text that we want to bring in. Again, we're trying to bake it into the scene. And you can see, in this case, again, kept it relatively low. Uh, kind of a medium number of steps so that it kind of baked enough. I found that if I did a little bit too, more, too much denoise, it started to morph some of the letters because there's a lot of, just from the font itself, a lot of styling that already happened. Um, so I don't have to do too much. So that's that example. All right, now comes the advanced one. So now we've seen we can easily bake in text uh, and really get some really great results. In this case, I want to create kind of a cyberpunk scene. Um, but, you know, a lot of the scenes that we create in this kind of world has a lot of really great neon or a lot of great kind of signage, but it's really hard to read and it may not really fit your true scene, right? You might have some more specific needs. So in this case, uh, for this story, I wanted to actually have this uh, character go to a bar named Clyde's. Obviously, this does not look anywhere near uh, close to Clyde's and that's fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a combination of our previous techniques of masking alongside using this new text node. So you can just, from an image standpoint, see what happens. We start with our original. We go and use the SAM uh, uh, selector for masking. So we mask out the sign. We then put a new text box with the Clyde's kind of logo to it. Um, and then finally, we render it and bake it in. And you can see it actually creates and blends it in. And you can see even the small details here where the actual uh, reflections reflect the new sign you have above. Uh, a lot of great stuff here. So quickly to walk through kind of how I lined it up, right? Same styler, sort of render of the original stuff. I did, uh, if, if you can see here, I did obviously put uh, a big blank sign obviously didn't even follow that direction, but that's fine because we were going to replace it anyways. Um, and when I bring it down here to the preview, I then go into my, for the preview bridge, I go into my SAM detector and that's where I went to basically uh, select just the sign by itself. And that has that mask there. Then I create a text box with our new draw text. So our draw text, I don't need to do a huge 1024, et cetera, right? Because we're creating just a small little text box. So I have a very small width and height of this. And I've also, you know, have a font that I'd like and purple color, et cetera, and the text alignment. And the final piece of this is now I have my mask, I have my text, which is, you know, just an image that's rendered. And I bring them together using the paste by mask by doing this. You can see the image base is bringing the actual base full image in. It's including the mask location, which we said is the mask out sign area. And then we're replacing it with our Clyde's area. But obviously, you can see this is not how I want the final look to feel, because it looks obviously very artificial and does not look like it's part of the scene. Even the reflection doesn't matter. So that image we're bringing back into the encode. And uh, this time, we're obviously including our glowing neon sign Clyde's. Uh, as part of it, and we're again baking it. Now you can see 
I didn't want to overbake it. If you overbake this again, the text colors, etc., doesn't work. So I I did a higher denoise because I want it to be pretty stylized, but I kept the st the steps very very low. Um, and you can see it's a great result. Very happy with it. All right, on to our last example. All right, so we're going to bring it together. I have some stuff that is actually blended in uh, and some stuff that's simply overlaid. You can see you can do some really exciting things now. Uh, and now you have a workflow. So you can obviously at any time want to create a new, let's say, magazine cover. You don't even have to change much. You can just literally render behind things and you're all done. So in this case, uh, I have a full on render as usual, right? Just a beautiful woman wearing a red dress in the bar. And uh, this is something, a new technique I did. I basically created a, um, a composite mask to be able to have this kind of border behind it, right? And you can see up here, all you do to create that border is you're creating an empty image behind it and I'm tinting it purple, you know, a little bit on the levels to get the right color of purple. And by doing so, you're kind of laying it behind the rendered image. Uh, and, and then from that point, right, I'm creating my little header to my magazine. So I said uh, the overlay text that's going to go over a top here. This is the, you know, snaz here and the magazine here. Now, I the reason I have it twice is again, I'm doing a black kind of shadow behind it. And then here, let me zoom in here, right? You can see it has the black kind of drop shadow behind it. Of both of these things and it doesn't have to be exactly lined up by the way you can see they're not it's not like a perfect drop shadow as you normally would find in let's say photoshop but as you render it it will bake it in and it'll make it look nice and and clean and uh just the way you want it to so by doing so bringing it back through uh, again you're kind of re vae encoding it adding the final details and because we want this last text and there's a lot of text here this could easily morph right, if you're trying to blend all the text together. So in this case, what I did was after I baked in the title text of the magazine, I then did an overlay on top afterwards. And by doing so, that then allows the text to still be crisp uh, because we want the kind of the, the detailed text to be crisp on the bottom end. And as you can see, great results.